Hey guys, so I wanted to give you a quick demo today on uh, integrating LDAP or in my case Active Directory like Windows Active Directory as your authentication method for Tower. It is actually quite simple. I'm going to log in really quick to my Tower instance and I'm going to show you where you actually do the configuration. It's really simple. You go down to settings, authentication, And right here, I'm going to click on LDAP. You see there's a multitude of various options, but you can authenticate against, right? You also have local, so you can create local accounts, which you can use Azure, GitHub, uh, Google, Radius, TACX, SAML. SAML is going to be something like um, single sign-on service, like Okta, where they handle the authentication, then pass back a token. But for my case, I'm just doing good old-fashioned LDAP. So the LDAP configuration is actually pretty simple. Point it towards my domain controller. See, I'm doing LDAP with no LDAP S uh, because it's not secure. And you give it the uh, basically the user it's able to log in with the password so it can authenticate. That way, it can actually do the lookups. I'm using member DN group type. There is an Active Directory group type, but it's working just fine uh, with member group. So I'm going with that. The rest of it is a mixture of uh, optional and required. So I'm going to show you my Active Directory really quick. It is really simple. It is demo.local. All of my users and groups are in the CN users group right here. And if you pop down, you can see I have test one, test two, and then these four groups, tower admins, auditors, team network, and users. And I have these mapped in various ways. So <clears throat> within tower, we have the concept of teams right so you have users and teams in active directory you have users and groups right so active directory i'm going to create some groups that i'm going to assign people to right if i have a thousand users i don't want to individually tweak permissions for every person i want to assign permissions to a group and then have those and in, uh, be inherited by all of the users as members of those groups so if you're put into tower admins you become an admin auditor is auditor um, tower users this is a special group so in tower there's an option right here LDAP require group if you put something in here which again this is optional so if you put something in here whatever group this is if a member that's attempting so any random user in your active directory if they attempt to log in they have to be a member of this group so tower underscore users in my case if they're not a member they get denied access they can't log in um, if there is no option set here, they can still log in, but they're only granted the permissions um, uh, that you specify below. So by default, they'll be able to log in, but they won't really be able to do anything other than, say, create a credential, something like that. So I've got uh, my two users. Test one is a system admin. And the way permissions work in Tower is uh, you inherit all of the child permissions below you. So if you're an admin, you basically have access to everything. You've got the keys to the kingdom. So it doesn't really matter what groups and other things you're associated with. You get access to everything. The test two user right here, their groups are uh, tower users and uh, tower team network. So you can actually delegate or rather specify which team they're going to become a member of. So um, Active Directory groups, right? You assign permissions to those groups. They inherit it, those users. In Tower, we have the same concept. Instead of calling them groups, they're called teams. So assign permission to teams, and they'll be inherited by their users. So this is generally my route uh, that I take just because it's a little bit more efficient or lazy, depending on how you want to look at it. So what else can I tell you about this configuration? Uh, I've got all of this documented in my blog, all the various options that I've put in here. So you don't really need to go too crazy with all this stuff but uh, say like LDAP team mapping this is where I actually map teams so if you're in the uh, tower admins uh, Windows group you're gonna get mapped to LDAP admins it's gonna create a team in L in um, uh, tower automatically so whenever you uh, first attempt to log in all the teams that I have in this mapping section are automatically gonna get created and then anybody in these groups are gonna get mapped in there as they authenticate in, right? Auditors, blah, blah, blah. Here's my um, uh, Windows Tower Team Network. If you're in that, uh, if you're in that group, you're going to get mapped over to LDAP Network as you log in. And if we pop into 
users here. So as users log in, test one and test two, it will create this account for them. Uh, when they uh, uh, first log in, it'll create their account as well as it will create the team. So if we look under LDAP network and we look at users that are in here, test two, right? This These guys are system admins, so you kind of ignore them. They don't really matter, um, right? They have the system admin tag over here on their role position, but this guy is just a member, right? So as he log in, as he logs in, he gets assigned that based on his Active Directory group. So all pretty straightforward, all pretty simple. Uh, good luck. Happy uh, authenticating. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks, guys.